So why aren't you getting gigs? And why is it that the gigs that you do get tend to be the sucky ones? Well, there's a massive reason why. And I'm gonna tell you what it is and show you exactly how to fix it. Hey, and welcome to Music Space. Here we help musicians monetize their craft. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay updated when new videos are uploaded. Okay, so let me paint the picture for you. The music industry as it is now, the gigging industry in particular, is really saturated. There's a lot of musicians, there's a lot of bands, there's a lot of new bands that are, have come into the fold in the past three, four, five, six years. And a lot of them are new, so they're willing to pay or play for less pay than say people who have been in the industry longer. And most musicians in general are trying to go for the same gigs, the same clubs, the same restaurants, all of these places that everybody plays at. And because of that, when people in clubs and venues are wanting to hire bands, they have a lot more options to choose from. And when that's the case, two things tend to happen. The people that hire bands start to demand higher quality out of their options. And the other thing is that it makes these bands have to do more to stand out if they wanna get hired by these places. The analogy that I like to always use for this is the music industry, the gig industry in particular, is like a big crowded stadium. And what's happening is there's all of these musicians and bands down on the field saying, hey, look at me, look at what I can do, hire me, buy my music, you know, get my band to come play for your event. So the question becomes, while you're on that field, what is it that you need to do to make yourself and your band and what you do stand out? And that brings us to this big, massive reason why you aren't getting gigs. And it's because you aren't distinct. And that makes you irrelevant. Now hang with me because this is what I mean by this. In the minds of the people who want to hire you, they're looking down at this field, this pool of musicians. Chances are, at least in their minds, you look and sound just like every other musician and band that wants to be hired by these same people. But that's really all okay. You don't have to worry about it because there's really three simple things that you need to do to fix this and stand out among these people that are down there in that stadium, in that pool. And the first one is a really simple one, and that is just be professional. And it's really crazy because this one thing alone is going to put you ahead of the crowd. There is an extreme lack of professionalism in this music industry among these crowds of musicians that are currently out there. And of course, it's not all of them, but there is a widespread sort of pandemic of unprofessionalism. Musicians don't show up on time. They don't learn the music. Their equipment is crappy. They, you know, don't know how to communicate effectively. They show up in some weird attire looking like they come off the street or something like that, you know, and that kind of stuff. So just being professional and showing that you're professional is gonna put you well ahead of a lot of these bands and musicians, especially to the people who are willing to pay top dollar for bands and hire you for those good type of gigs. And then the second thing is you need to up your social media game. And here's what I mean. We are in this content era where video and audio and stuff like that is king. And the way that people, you know, come to know other people and what they do is through their social media. And this is especially good for us bands, artists, and musicians because, you know, we're good at audio, we play music. So we can take advantage of that, but we need to be posting stuff, posting the best of what we do, you know, showing that professionalism, showing what it is that we have to offer so that we stand out again among that crowd who have crappy audio on their social media, bad photos and bad videos, you know, bad lighting with crappy cell phone videos and stuff like that on their social media. And then the third thing, which I would argue is probably the most important out of the three, is you need to get clear on the value that you provide people and you need to niche down based on that value. And I know that may sound a bit like a mouthful, but here's what I mean. You need to position yourself or your band as something specific that provides a specific value or solves a specific problem. And just as an analogy to help you understand this, it's basically the difference between something general and something specific. So let's say you have a splitting headache 
and you want to go get some medicine to take for your headache. And you go to the store and you go down the aisle and you see this big bottle that says painkillers. And then on that same aisle, you see another bottle that says for splitting headaches. You are more likely to buy the bottle that says for splitting headaches because it's a solution to a specific problem that you have. And how that translates to what we're talking about here is if you can position yourself as the band of professionalism, as the wedding band who provides specific types of music to keep people dancing or the specific style of music band, like we are an R&B band that does this specific thing, like just 90s music. You want to niche down as much as you can so that you can provide and position yourself to provide that specific value. And as it pertains to professionalism, that's something that's extremely important. And I've done several videos about professionalism and things bands can do to be professional. And you can go here and check out some of those videos right now.